Hello everybody, this is N50. This is our last lecture of the year. Believe it or not, you made it. We are on our last one, almost done with the school year. So this lecture is actually gonna be a little bit different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the lecture as traditional notes, but then instead of doing our practice problem just on paper in our notebook, our practice problem is actually going to be a lab activity. Rather than just doing a calculation, we're gonna go into the lab, we're gonna do our titration, and then we'll use that data as our practice problem. So we're kind of mushing together the lab and the lecture all into one hands-on lecture, okay? So this video is gonna cover you know, the lecture portions of it, and then the lab part, obviously, we'll have to do together in person. So let's get started. What is a titration? Well, a titration is a lab technique. It is a technique that we use to figure out what the concentration is of an unknown substance. We're going to use the fact that acids and bases react with each other, and they neutralize. When a acid and base neutralize with each other, when they're all finished, the moles of acid and the moles of base have equaled each other, and we'll be able to use that information to help us do some calculations. So there are some vocab terms that we're going to need that are pretty unique to this lab technique. First is titrand. The titrand is your unknown solution. It could be an acid or a base but we don't know what its concentration is. Compare that to the word titrant. The titrant is the solution that you do know the concentration of. If you don't know the concentration of your base, you're gonna need an acid that you do know the concentration of. If you don't know the concentration of your acid, you're gonna need to know the concentration of a base. And so you'll be having a titrant in the lab and you'll have a titrant in the lab. The equivalence point is the point at which all of the acid has reacted with all of the base. Your moles of acid equal exactly your moles of base. If you do your titration perfectly, you will get very, very close to your equivalence point but you should know a lab's never perfect, right? So we call the end point, the point at which it looks like in the lab your titration is done. In a perfect universe, the equivalence point and the end point would be identical. Life's not perfect. If we do a really good job and you perform everything the way you're supposed to, your end point and your equivalent point should be super close together, as close as we can get it. Your end point is usually gonna be found by a color change. We're gonna add a chemical that will change colors when we get to the equivalence point, or we might use special lab equipment that graphs the pH, and we might look to see where on the graph our pH changes a specific way. So there's various ways you can figure out your end point. You kind of assume that your end point is your equivalence point because it's the best we can do. There will be margin of error just like every lab. So how are we going to know we reach the end point? What we will use in our class is what we call an indicator. An indicator is a chemical that you add that's not part of the actual neutralization reaction. But what it will do is it will turn colors based on the pH of the resulting solution. And so when you see the color change, you know that you have reached that end point. You have to be careful and you have to pick the right indicator to have the right pH range. Not all indicators work for everything. So you'll often find little pictures, little charts like this. It will give you the names of the indicators. They're usually pretty complicated, pretty big chemicals. Usually we don't refer to them by their chemical formula, we just refer to them by their name. And then it will show you the range 
that that indicator changes colors in. So you can see, for example, methyl red about a little bit before 5 pH, it'll be red. And then as it crosses into that 6 range, you'll see that it starts to turn yellow. Some are a lot easier to see a distinct color change than others. Sometimes it's tough because it might be a really slow, gradual change and you kind of don't know when to call it quits. Um, sometimes this is tough for people who are colorblind. If you're colorblind, you have to make sure you're with a lab partner that is not colorblind, right? Um, one of the most common ones we use is called phenylthaline. That's this crazy word down here, phenylthaline. Phenylthaline is nice because the color change is very obvious. It goes from clear to pink. It will be hot pink if you go too far. I kind of picked the background to match our phenylthaline. Our PowerPoint background is hot pink, right? Um, your goal when you use phenylthaline is to try to get it to be the palest pink you can possibly get. The very instant it turns pink, that means you've gone to that equivalence point and you're technically a teeny tiny bit past it, aren't you? So this is a good one that we use for a lot of things. Okay. The lab setup. During a titration, you use an Erlenmeyer flask that you put your unknown chemical into. You have what's called a burette, which is a long skinny glass tube with a valve on the bottom. You put your known concentration in here. The one we're gonna do is gonna have an unknown acid and we're gonna have a known concentration of base. You could do an unknown base and a known acid, it doesn't matter. This is just what we're doing for this activity. You slowly open the valve, you let a little bit of the base in, it reacts and you see if the color changes. If not, you add a little bit more base, a little bit more, a little bit more until you see the color change. There is some specific techniques that you have to have. You have to be able to turn the valve very slowly and add just a drop at a time. You have to know how to fill your burette so you don't get air bubbles. You have to know how to read the markings on the burette. You have to know how to swirl your flask to make sure everything mixes. We'll walk you through all the hands-on technique part, okay? The biggest, biggest thing is that you have to go slowly and you have to be careful. When you do this, it starts clear. You add a drop and you'll see a teeny bit of pink and you keep swirling and it will disappear and it will look clear again. You add a little bit more, as soon as it hits, it looks a little bit pink, you swirl it, it goes back to clear. Eventually, you get the palest, palest pink you can imagine. When you hold that up to a piece of white paper, it should just barely look pink. If you go too far, it's ruined. You went too far, hot pink's no good, you have way too much of your um, base added, you've gone way past that equivalent point, you gotta throw it out and start over. In college, I remember we did so many titrations and the professor would just walk around the room and go, nope, too pink, throw it out. Nope, too pink, throw it out. And people would spend hours and hours trying to get it just right and people would just, oh, it was just so, so upsetting when you went past that end point. So you gotta be real careful, okay? All right, so once you do your titration, you're gonna read the volume on your burette. You're gonna see how much base you added, and you're gonna use the amount of base to help you calculate what your concentration of the acid was down here in your flask. So let me kinda of just give you a real simple walkthrough of how we do this. If you have a known acid, and an unknown base. The volume of your acid used from your burette, you convert that into moles of acid used. To go from volume to moles, you gotta use molarity. You have the molarity because your 
your known was given to you. Assuming you did a really good job titrating, you're going to be able to convert the moles of acid to moles of base because it's going to be the same number, right? You calculated your moles of acid, assuming you did a good titration and you're at your end point, that's the same as the moles of base. Well, if you know the volume of your unknown solution and you know how many moles are in that, you can use the molarity calculation and calculate what your concentration was. Now, what if you were doing like what we're doing in the lab, where you have an unknown acid and a known base? It's not any different. It's the same exact pathway. Let me show you. It's just going to be different if you're, you know, instead of saying acid, you say base. Instead of base, you say acid. So, use the volume of base that you used to get to the end point from your burette. Convert that into moles of base that you used using molarity. We're going to assume we did a good job titrating, so my moles of base will equal my moles of acid. Now I know the moles of acid. I know how much acid I put in my Erlenmeyer flask. And I'm able to concentrate or sorry, I'll be able to calculate what that concentration of my unknown is using the molarity calculation. So you should see that the calculations in a titration are not new, are they? They're from our solutions chapter. We're just using them in a situation involving acids and bases. There are some ways this gets more complicated. There are some things you have to be careful of, some things you have to remember. First is that our burette measures in milliliters, but our molarity is in liters. So you will have to do a calculation to convert milliliters into liters to do your calculations. The other thing that can be a little bit complicated is it's not always a one-to-one -one ratio, acid to base, right? Um, you know, if you have something like magnesium hydroxide, there's two hydroxides in that one molecule, right? So you have to look at your stoichiometry. It may not be a one-to-one -one ratio of acid to base. Maybe a one-to-two ratio or a two-to-one, or maybe it's like a two-to-three ratio. You have to actually look at your equation and see what the stoichiometry is. And then the other big thing to remember is that technically, your endpoint and equivalence point are not the same unless you lived in a perfect universe and we don't, okay? So just be a little bit aware of that. You're going to have some percent error, okay? All right, so the next slide is actually a, a set of links to other videos. And I'm gonna ask that you watch these other videos it's a real quick, what is a titration? There's going to be an overview of how you perform a titration. He does a good job showing you what it should look like when it's um, pale pink for phenolphthalein instead of being hot pink. There's a video showing you how do you set up a burette. You have to clean them a certain way. You have to fill them a certain way. Reading the volume on a burette can be a little bit tricky, so this is going to walk you through that. We have another good titration video of how we do a titration. They have some good tips in here. And then this is a great little summary of our acid-base um, equilibriums that we've learned. It reminds you what strong and weak are. It shows you what it looks like on a graph when you do a titration. So instead of me trying to put all of this into a PowerPoint, here are some links of people actually doing the titration and showing you what it looks like, show you the equipment and things like that. So we're going to watch those and then we'll transition into the actual hands-on portion. Okay. For the hands-on portion of the lecture, you're going to want to do all of the work in your composition book 
as if this was part of the notes. We're just, instead of gluing in a little practice problem to solve, you're going to calculate and do all, you know, capture all your data and stuff and put that in your notebook instead. All right, if you are watching the video, at this point, the video is going to end. You know, you might be watching this as homework to help get you ready for the lab, um, or maybe you are absent. The rest of this will be done in the classroom, doing it with actual burettes, doing an actual titration at the lab benches. All right, everybody, that was it for this very last lecture video of the year. I hope that was helpful. Bye.